Welcome back to Mason Talks. So with the severity of Deshaun Watson's Achilles injury now confirmed, the Cleveland Browns are not only going to have to be looking for a new franchise quarterback in the coming weeks and months, but they're also going to have to figure out in the short term who is going to be under center in a couple of days against the Baltimore Ravens. And in my view, this should be an absolute no-brainer. Before the Browns turn to anybody else, before they decide to throw everything in the tank, the Browns need to give Jameis Winston a shot at career redemption. And I know, I know, Jameis Winston probably does not give you that much confidence or build that much excitement within this fan base. But looking at your other options right now, which would be Dorian Thompson Robinson, Bailey Zappi, or just tanking for a top overall draft pick, considering those options and considering where your team is at right now with all of the core pieces it has put together with the Miles Garretts, the Joel Batonio, the, the Denza Ward, all of these, you know, Nick Chubb, all of these players who are now at the sort of um, prime point in their career, I think you at least have to give Jameis Winston, a veteran like Jameis Winston, a shot at turning this thing around. Because going with Jameis Winston right now, in all reality, would be capitalizing on a seemingly new trend with NFL quarterbacks where these guys who were drafted high in the NFL draft, like first round picks, ended up fizzling out with their first or first couple teams. And then once they ended up in the right situation, they were able to thrive. And this is something that is seeming to become more and more consistent. You look at a couple of years ago, Ryan Tannehill seemed to be destined for being a backup the rest of his career. He ended up in Tennessee. He ended up with Mike Vrabel. He ended up playing with Derrick Henry, put all of these pieces together in the right offensive system at the right time. And Ryan Tannehill suddenly extended his career, you know, four or five years. He was a legitimately good starter. He took that team to the AFC championship game. You look right now, there are several of these guys throughout the National Football League. You look at Geno Smith. Geno Smith was a backup for the better part of a decade before landing with the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, the Jets couldn't make Geno Smith work. The the, the Giants couldn't make Geno Smith work. He, he had a stop with the, with the Chargers and it didn't work out. Geno Smith gets to the Seahawks and suddenly he is a competent winning NFL starter. You know, Sam Darnold this year, He Sam Darnold's the guy who seemingly turned his career around. Jared Goff is probably the best quarterback who started with the Rams. He was the first overall pick. Things fizzled out. They wanted to go, you know, their separate ways. And he has been leaps and bounds better with the Detroit Lions than he was with the Los Angeles Rams. The one that probably hurts the most for Browns fans is considering the fact that Baker Mayfield couldn't win here. Baker Mayfield couldn't find a way to win football games in Cleveland. He couldn't find a way to win in Carolina. Baker couldn't find a way to win in Los Angeles as a backup behind Matthew Stafford. But the minute Baker got to Tampa Bay in that right system with the talent that he has there or had there before the, the injuries on Monday night, Baker Mayfield obviously has been successful. All of these quarterbacks who we've mentioned, even even going back farther, you can make the same comparison with Drew Brees. These quarterbacks were all drafted high. A lot of these guys, you know, first round picks, top 10 picks, and it, just that potential. I feel like when you have that potential, you're, you're a first round pick, you're a top 10 pick, at some point, with, with the right system, the right coaches, you put everything together right, you'll find a way to be successful in the National Football League. And you look at Jameis Winston's career, and while, while he, you know, hasn't necessarily been the winningest quarterback, you know, he had a, he had a couple good seasons with Tampa Bay. His second year specifically, 
they had a winning record and, and he had 28 touchdown passes, 18 interceptions. Obviously, everybody remembers the uh, 30 for 30 uh, touchdown to interception ratio uh, in 2019. But, you know, the most recent Jameis success was in New Orleans when, you know, he, he was a he was a backup there under Drew Brees for a couple of years. And then in 2021, Jameis Winston went five and two with the Saints and he had 14 touchdown passes to three interceptions. I mean, those are numbers that if you put those statistics at the quarterback position right now for the Cleveland Browns, you give the Browns a guy who threw seven games can get you 14 touchdown passes and three interceptions. And this is a completely different season. This is, this is a, this is a Browns team. That's probably one of the best teams in the national football league. Obviously Jameis was then derailed by that ACL injury. Things fell apart in new Orleans, but I mean, Jameis Winston was a Heisman winning quarterback for a reason. He was the first overall pick in new Orleans or uh, in Tampa Bay for a reason. This is a guy who's had multiple chances to start and and he's put up good statistics throughout his career for a reason. Is Jameis Winston going to be some all pro, you know, greatest of the great, best of the best quarterback? No, I don't think he's ever going to be that in his career. But can you plug Jameis Winston into this team with a coach in Kevin Stefanski who, you know, I know we like to, to, to bash Kevin and his play calling, but Kevin Stefanski has gotten an awful lot out of the worst quarterbacks, you know, we've given him. I mean, he he had Jacoby Brissett looking more than competent. He had Joe Flacco looking more than competent at, at, at 38 years of age. I, I just think that you're looking at this Browns team right now and everybody's thinking tank, 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 sell off your parts, get rid of everything, you know, draft, you know, Shadur Sanders or, or or Cameron Ward or whoever, you know, draft a quarterback top 10. I think that before we get to that point, before we get to the point where we blow everything up and set the franchise back 10 years again, you at least have to give Jameis Winston a shot at redemption, career redemption. Things haven't gone well for him throughout his career. You know, looking at, at, at where he is right now, first overall pick he's a bust I mean he's been a backup for the bulk of his career he's a bust give him a chance to get in give him a chance to have the rest of the season starting um you know hopefully the offensive line doesn't sabotage him like they seemingly sabotaged Deshaun Watson all season um I think Nick Chubb's gonna get better as the year goes on and I think that once that running game is back and once the Browns can fully utilize the play action pass like they have liked to do in recent years I think the offense is going to start rolling again and and, and as we saw um against the Cincinnati Bengals this past Sunday you put Jameis Winston in the game he goes right down the field scores a touchdown and in that brief moment for like a 10 second period there was at least a glimmer of hope that maybe the Browns could have could have recovered that onside kick and then had a shot to tie the game. Jameis Winston immediately went in and moved the ball down the field. He did something that 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 DTR didn't do. Um, he did something that Deshaun has struggled to do all year. Jameis Winston, like I think we know what he is. He's not going to be this perfectly clean quarterback. Obviously, he's going to make turnovers. Obviously, you know he's not going to be some. Patrick Mahomes, CJ Stroud level guy, but can he be Geno Smith? Can he be, you know, Ryan Tannehill from a couple years ago? I think that potential is still there. I think that you at least have to give him a fair shot to, to sort of redeem what has been a, a, a failure of a career for a first overall pick. Um, and if you're the Browns, I just don't see why that's why, why that would like, I, I know that the, the athletic had an article that I was reading the other day and in that article, they made it seem like the only reasonable path forward for the Browns would be to start DTR. I, I mean, I think it's the complete opposite. Um, you know, all we've seen from Dorian Thompson Robinson in all reality is that he is likely for this team right now where we are with this Cleveland Browns franchise, DTR is at best a backup. Could he be a starter down the road? Maybe. But is he going to be a starter you know, at the same time that Miles Garrett is still great, is he going to be a starter along the same timeline as Nick Chubb and David Njoku and all these guys? I don't think so. 
Jameis, if Jameis can redeem his career this season, he's right in line with the rest of your core. Um, and, and that's at least a guy who you could look at and maybe, maybe possibly salvage what you have post Deshaun Watson trade. Um, and I just don't see why you would do anything other than that. I just, that's, that, that's gotta be how it is. Um, so in my view, what the Browns need to do going forward and what I think they are going to do is give Jameis Winston a shot to succeed. But let me know in the comments, do you think it should be DTR? Do you think it should be Bailey's? I mean, what do you think the Browns should do at quarterback? Because obviously they don't have a lot uh, of safe options right here. Um, but I think Jameis Winston is, is the best shot that they have. So let me know in the comments, what do you think the Browns should do at quarterback going forward? Thank you for listening to the Mason Dog Sports Show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.